So today I decided to talk about a topic that um you know a lot of people in um my culture they don't really understand and fully get what is a Jamaican Obiaman, you know? Or a lot of people don't really understand. They hear about it but they don't really get it. They think they talk about religions and all these type of things. And I'm going to basically try to break it down in my understanding through what I get from my spirits since they consider me one. Um, when we're talking about a Jamaican Obiaman, and I emphasize on Jamaican because I do realize that even though it was the first term was founded in Jamaica as Obia, but I do know that other people in other um, countries have Obia. And theirs is a little bit, theirs is different compared to what I know Jamaican Obia to be like. So when we're talking about Jamaican Obia, we're talking about someone whose spirit is given the permission to work with the unseen forces of the earth. Now, however he decides to work with these unseen forces is totally, he or she decides to work with these unseen forces is totally up to them and their moral standards. Now, to say that, I see a lot of people saying that this is a religion and it has certain deities and this and that, and this may be true according to the other um, parts of the world. But when we're talking about Jamaica, we have to understand that this comes from a set of people called the Jamaica Maroons. Now, my family come from different Maroons, but but my real lineage of where I come from is a Kong Pong Maroons. That is where my bloodline stands for, stands from. And when we're getting to a Kong Pong Maroons, we're gonna understand that what we have to understand what are they maroons are a bunch of tribes that was that came together to fight for their freedom and to fight for their, their family's freedom you understand now the main most of the main tribes that were you know were made up of these um that made that made up the kong pong maroons the, the main ones were the ashanti the congolese and the karamantis now, there are also the Mandingos, the Yoruba, Arawaks, and I believe the Igbos was there. And I'm sure some other little, you know, I'm sure some other tribes that had, you know, a smaller population was there as well. But the main ones that we definitely know about are the Shantis, the Congolese, and the Karamantis. Along with the Arawaks, these tribes were learning <clears throat> and creating a way through aggressive energies and spirits to gain a favorable outcome in order to get out of war to get I mean, yeah, to get to freedom to get out of bondages whoever felt or tried that they could oppress us because we all know 1738 what the hell happened with that but that's a whole nother story but um yeah like I was saying it allowed the uh, tribes to come together and they had a create way of getting things done. This was in the time for the nicey nicey people. You understand? And all the nice the nicey nice deities I should say. So with the Maroons being a combination of all these different tribes and them knowing and having different secrets, they were able to conform um what you will call I guess their own chaos magic amongst themselves, amongst the each individual tribes that was there at, at the time of war. Now I keep mentioning war because I'm trying to keep you focused on the type of energy that they was harvesting. Now we go and we fast forward a couple of hundred years where 
now these tribes are mixed and mingled and interbred with one another. And we as their descendants, we are no longer strictly Congo. We are no longer strictly Ashanti. We are no longer strictly Karamanti. We are no longer strictly Mandingo. We are no longer strictly just Arawak. We are all of these things combined. And if you have that blood, that hot blood that was given and that, that was chosen by birth, it now falls upon you to work with them. And you will realize that depending on what ancestors or group ancestors that tend to, how you say, govern you the most. Cause you know, just like I said, we all are made up of different ancestors. Whichever one you tend to govern you the most, these are the ones that will tend to come to you and they would explain to you there's some of the secrets and they will show you in various ways how to execute these secrets in the ways that you need done. Now remember, just because the war is over doesn't mean the personality goes back to being peaceful or something like that. So now you have an ugly man in Jamaica and his spirits are still in a, um, a warlike state. When someone comes to ask you to do work for them and they said that they was wrong by somebody and they want retribution done, you have to not understand the mentality, well not the mentality, but the, 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 the force or the energy that this person is not working with. They're working with energy that went where people were killing, chopping heads off, sending people on fire, all type of ill shit that was going on in those times they have those type of spirits that chose to be with them on earth and work with them while they were being um, born, whether it be from birth or through family and lineages. So you're talking about a set of spirits that no longer believe in an eye for an eye, but an eye for a fucking head. You know, it's a different mentality or a force rather than a mentality. So you could be born with these energies that are highly aggressive from uh, a Shanti perspective, a Congo perspective, a Arawak perspective, or sorry, not, not perspective, I, should, I mean secrets, secrets, not perspective, secrets, and different attributes of energies, like um, you may have an energy that's very similar, but they come from a different ancestral background, a different tribe background, but that energy likes you or wants you to work with them. And that's how you work with them. And that's how you get to work with them. So there's no, it's just one straight path on, you know what I'm saying? When you're talking about an ugly woman or ugly woman, because this is basically a sorcerer. This person is has different spirits that come across their ancestral bloodline and like I said, they present themselves through different times or whenever. Some people just, some people have one or two and some people have all 10, 15. It depends on the individual itself and what they're capable of. Like how good is the spirit just able to interpret the message that the spirit is given to them or the spirits is given to them. You get what I'm saying? So, um, I'm gonna see if I come out with like a part two or, you know, later on with other videos to upgrade, update certain things that I'm able to tell you guys, you know, without indulging too much information. But, um, yeah, I hope this video was informative. Please like, share, subscribe. Yeah, man. Me have sound to be can't catch. Why not me gathering that them are skin? 35 to be and three market. Catch a photo, Rick Parrot, me start press. Advanced technology. Talk me, I use WhatsApp for me ring. And me, I tell you on a joke thing. We are okay, go so hard, make you so a keen. Cause all of me, dog, them are obia man. Obia man, obia man, go so man. Ring full of dopey, full of powder. Be a chunk up on me, oh, stop. All of me dog, them a obia man Obia man, obia man, guzo man Ring full of dopey, full of powder Two dead cow, funny hoe stop